guys welcome back uh we got a special guest tonight man uh this is one i think everybody's been looking forward to it. everybody i've told this yeah. to they're like man we can't wait for this episode to come out so you know i want to give a warm welcome and thank you for taking your time as well uh, you know you're known as harpo ddl on instagram everybody knows you by that name as well so you know harpo thank you for you know coming and then for some of the audience that might not know about you you know give, give a little quick you know intro about you know who you are and you know what are you all about you yeah. know, because I'll, I'll be looking forward to this one, so. <laughs> me too, yeah. No, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I'm Harpo. Um, I consider myself a visionary, a cultural producer. I'm the executive director of 5X, which is, uh, you know, Canada's largest South Asian arts organization yeah. based in Surrey and Vancouver. Uh, I'm also a podcast host. Uh, my podcast is Brown Girl Guilt. And... Um, I'm a proud kid from Surrey, honestly. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I'm like, I'm a proud kid from Surrey. I want everyone to know. <laughs> and uh, really, I guess what I'm about is just telling the story of like what it means to be this kin like kid born in Canada to parents who are not born here. My parents are from Punjab. Yeah. And um, so I guess everything that I do is around that, around telling that story, around being that person in yeah. every space. And I am just making sure that I share that and take that everywhere I go into every room. Yeah. Mm. No, and, and that's, you know, yeah, your story is very intriguing. And, like, the perspective you have on um, on life and how you go about it and even the platforms that you engage with and how you go about it, I think it's um, it's impressive, I'm not going to lie. Especially, like, you know, at, at a, I feel like you had this idea and how everything is at a young age. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have that. Yeah. You know, at a, especially, like, us, like, we just, like, you know, to go into our 30s and... Um, we just having like this realization now that you know we gotta represent it in a positive manner where we don't have these platforms enough and you know even the brown girl guilt that i uh, we listened to the sh uh, one with shannon and um it's interesting to just listen to perspectives because like a lot of the time now we we don't want to listen to people's perspectives mm. we have this narrative set in our minds nah man it's like no these girls are just speaking or these guys are just chatting he's like they don't know any better it's like who are they this that it's like we have we live in a, such a uh, negative environment these days it, it, it's actually crazy how negative everything is and you know that's the, one of the things that i feel like you hone in on like where that negativity is like you gotta you gotta get that out of your life yeah. you know because we're surrounded by it anywhere you go it's actually crazy like if you think about it like how negative even our minds begin to kind of program to the negativity and like take his like go in this whole like mind of his own you know so mm. that's the one thing we want to touch upon with you was like how do you decipher that because like you know it's not easy like especially if you having a platform like you gotta and being involved in 5x fest you have to talk to a lot of people where you might not you know resonate with on a certain level but you still have to you know I guess you know one of the things I, I did read that kind of cheated for your uh, <laughs> <laughs> for your um, uh, the article you wrote about how you know it's like picking an avatar in a game. Yeah. You know, I, so that was a very interesting. I never thought of it like that, because and, and then you're like you know I I now I focus on just honing in who I am, no matter what setting it is. Yeah. That's who I want to be. Like I'm just tired of being this or that, given the setting. You know, take us through that journey. How do you even have that thought process? Because it was cool reading that article. It was a Substack, right? Yeah. That yeah. Someone asked you about, I don't know what it was. Yeah, now I'm thinking about what that one was. I think, yeah, the avatar Oh, you misunderstood. Thing. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think um, I was always a very curious kid. Like, even as a kid, I was always so curious. I don't know why. I just wanted to learn more about people. I wanted to learn more about life. I wanted to learn more about myself. And I think that curiosity drove a lot of what you're saying around, like, um, just inserting myself in certain conversations. But then, I don't know, I think um, it's so easy to be negative. It's so easy really if you think yeah. about it. It's harder to be positive, mm. but the default is negative because our minds, our egos are conditioned to be constantly chasing for everything that could go possibly That's wrong. wrong. Yeah. And I think that choosing joy at any time of your life is very, very difficult, but is the most fruitful. It is what is grounding, it is what's real. And I think um, I always try to choose love no matter how hard the situation is. And I find that even when I was in this place in my life where I was outside focused, I was uh, external focused, I was yeah. trying to please everybody, I was trying mm. to be anything but myself, that's when I was choosing all these like avatars. Mm. That's when I was trying to be someone that I'm not. Oh, yeah. And I, 
it was a shitty time. Like I was so yeah. disconnected. Like none of the relationships were good. <laughs> like, you know, it with anybody, like I was just unhappy. And then when I realized, oh, I actually just have to be myself. That's when everything changed anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think one thing you touched on is people pleasing on. Cause like I struggle with that notion to this day, actually. I struggle with it so much because like, it's so hard for me to sometimes say no, especially to the people that you love. Mm. And then like sometimes like it drains you because when you do, like you don't say no to them. And when you see certain action, be like, and then you think about it, I'm like, damn, like, yo, like I do everything to my best ability I can. And this is how I get reciprocated. And then that comes to the, you know, outlook of, as you said, mm -hmm. like being the people pleaser. And then now it <laughs> wraps you into that negative mindset. We're like, man, okay, I'm not gonna do this the next time. But then now it's taking away from the real you and turning into this ugly you that you don't wanna be. So, you know, it, it's, it, I'm still, I still struggle with it, I'm not gonna lie. It, it's so hard for me to, you know, say no sometimes to you and my parents or certain to my close cousins. Cause I, my mind just first goes like, no, I, I, I got this, I can do this. And, you know, it, I don't know how you how, how do you focus on that? Because I, I think a lot of people do struggle with this as well. Like, how do you change that narrative of like people pleasing on all levels, whether it's your relationship with your parents or talking with your parents? I think that's the one huge factor that I struggle with is like is speaking with my parents in a positive manner where I think the outlook is going to be positive. But then my, my understanding was, no, the outlook is going to be negative. I don't want to talk about it. But okay, dad, I'll do it. That was my response to everything he said, rather than pushing back, be like, no, dad, like, mm -hmm. I think this is how it should be. So I was just too scared. Maybe I was just too scared to say it, but for me, it was just like, I just want to make him proud. I don't want to say anything negative to him, so. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. <laughs> yeah, well, I, would, I guess I would ask the both of you, like, what is people pleasing to both of you? How do you see it? How do you understand it? Hmm. You want to take the lead on this one? <laughs> <laughs> people pleasing, huh? I don't know. I, I think though, like because we were born in, like we're first generation. Yeah. I think we we seek to pe pe uh, please people, to compensate for the trauma and stuff that we've been through. Yeah. As first generations, because we're seeking happiness, we're seeking uh, approval from yeah. other people. Yeah. And we we kind of avoid the conversation of like, okay, even though you know I'm there happy, am I happy myself? And that's a lot of, it's a huge issue within our, in our culture too, is because yeah. it's all about giving. Yeah. And we talk about this, <laughs> I don't know how many times we talk about this in our previous podcast and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I, I Emmett knows I said it before, it's be selfish before being selfless. Mm. Right. And a lot of people think that is, you know, that's not right. You know, you're being ignorant, this and that. But it's like at the same time, like how can you really help other people when you're not in the best situation yourself? So. I think people pleasing in that sense, yeah. There's a lot of negativity, like you were saying, behind it to, to feed, uh, to feed the ego, mm -hmm. in that sense. So I don't know. That's my definition of it. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's it kind of uh, expanding on that. It almost makes you think you're doing something <laughs> right. Like, mm -hmm. uh, for example, like now, like being in a relationship, it's like she's like Amber, and she's like your traits are toxic. I'm like, what do you mean you're toxic? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm a toxic man. I'm like, I'm, I'm a toxic. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not toxic. Yeah. She's like, yes, you are. She's like, you're a people pleaser. Mm. She's like, you don't understand it. She's like, it's okay. She's like, I'm not saying like, like oh, this, you're fucked up, this, that. She's like, that, will, that won't allow you to grow mm. at all. She's like, think about it. I mean, she's like, How? so then she made me start reflecting. She's like, okay, I mean, she's like, take, look back at your life like a couple years back. She's like, how have you changed when it comes to that aspect? So I'm like, now I'm sitting there like deep reflecting in yeah, my mind. I'm yeah, like, as you should. yo, she <laughs> is right. Yeah. Like, how have I changed? I haven't. Yeah. I'm in the same state of mind that I was before where I think I was doing, I was doing it right, but I wasn't. Yeah. So for people pleasing for me, it was just like, okay, I'm at a veil for everybody at the cost of my mental health. Yeah. My mom's going to call me. They know I'm going to pick up. So now they have this availability to be like, no matter when, they can call me when, yeah. at any time, without a question. Yeah. And same goes for anybody. They're like, Amir, yeah, because you're enabling that behavior. Yeah. They're like, because you're a people pleaser mm -hmm. and you haven't stood against that. She's like, now you're draining your mental health or your, the way you have time for my, even like my girlfriend, she says, the time for me. Hmm. She's like, you don't have the full um, time to give me. Yeah. Half the time you're lost in your own world. Right, so for me, that's what I, I struggle with personally. What I think people pleasing does to you, or what it is. Mm -hmm. But what about yourself? What, what do you think? 
Like, what, what is it that yeah. is so, like, you know, it's like a conundrum, a conundrum you know, yeah. that we're stuck in. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think similar things. And I think also to add to it, I think uh, people pleasing are two things. It's um, abdicating your own needs. So, mm. like, literally being like, I have no needs. needs. And, yeah. like, a deep fear of rejection. Mm. Yeah, nobody wants to be rejected that's true. and if I don't give to you if I don't do for you that's I don't show true. up for you you might reject, reject me yeah. and therefore I will be alone yeah. I will not have love in my life mm. so I have to do X, Y, and Z I have to give and give and give yeah. and I have to strip myself of my own needs I have to be absolutely perfect because I'm terrified of being rejected, rejected. Mm. Yeah. that's what people pleasing is to me and it actually doesn't work because when you have no needs you are not being authentic to who you sense, are. Yeah. So you're constantly shape shifting. You're constantly being a different avatar Sorry, to every yeah. person. Mm. Um, you're like, for example, like this morning when we, before we got here, <laughs> you guys were like, do you guys want coffee? And I could have been like, yeah, I'll have a coffee. <laughs> yeah. But like afterwards, yeah, I might have done the Kanasi, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 so <clears throat> being so intimately connected with your own needs that you're not changing who you are based on this idea of fitting in, in yeah. right? You don't need to fit in anywhere. And I think a lot of us people please because we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be rejected. We want to be cool. We want to be loved at yeah. the end of the day. So what's, uh, how would you say, what, what is the balance between the two then? Being maybe yeah. able to provide affection, yeah, but also at the same time, making sure you take care of yourself as well. I think it really changes moment to moment. I feel like you have to be so present with what's actually arising for you. Um, I don't think that there's any problem in showing up for people. I think being there for people, showing love, mm, nurturing yeah. people, caring for people exactly. is yeah. beautiful, cool, yeah. but only as it serves you in a way that is healthy for you. Um, I think that there's a delicate balance between, like even people pleasing, like the energy of people pleasing is I am not good enough. Mm. I'm not good enough and I want you to validate that I'm good enough. People pleasing is actually manipulative if you really think about it because you're trying to get something from someone that you don't actually have. have. But if mm. you're giving for the sake of giving, like if you're just doing because you want to and because it's coming from a place of love, love yeah. then then it actually isn't people pleasing. It is actually just being there and giving, right? Mm. But if you're trying to get something from someone, we see this a lot. Like, I mean, uh, my mom is a classic people pleaser. <laughs> she will do everything for everybody but so yeah. she'll cook she'll clean she'll do everybody's laundry none of us ask for it none of us want it and then at the end she'll do it and be like I mean, thank you Nikki yeah. Yeah. And I'm like is that why you did it you did it for a thank, thank you because yeah. I didn't want you to do it anyway I've told you so many times actually please don't do my laundry I don't like it when you do it yeah. you put stuff in the dryer when they shouldn't yeah. go you put my clothes <laughs> away in the wrong places yeah. I would rather you not do it but she's in her people pleasing she wants validation That's she so wants true. love mm. so she keeps doing it and that to me is people pleasing, not doing it from a genuine place of love. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, just kind of uh, expanding on that, like even like my mom, like my mom is like, uh, she's like a pillar in our whole family. Mm. She was the one person that everybody would come to, like, you know, whether it's every Sunday is coming, every, all the cousins are coming over, can my mom made pranate for them, this, yeah. that. So when she felt the disconnect, like when the cousins are doing the thing, everybody, they're not answering the calls anymore, yeah. just due to some BS in the family. And I saw how it impacted her because her love and joy came out of like just seeing everybody together in a camaraderie, whether every, she doesn't care in what facet it is like she could care less if she has money or not, but she just wants everybody to be together. Right. So. And seeing her, the mental toll it took on her when like the cousins that she knows that she took care of, mm. that she cared for, that she would call every other week and be like, hey, I come over because she know their circumstances at home are not the greatest. Mm. So she took care of it. And then, then when they just go completely MIA, then she's like, she's what hurt. did I do wrong? Yeah, mm. yeah. She's yeah. like, Mata sara He's like, and then, then I told the mom, I'm like, mom, this is your skewed narrative that you shouldn't have gone from. Because mm. like, she struggles with sometimes my employees at my shop. Mm. She treats them like they're the daughters and this. And I'm like, mom. Don't expect anything out of them. Yeah. They're there for a purpose, which is work, get to a certain point, and leave. But you're building these attachments that are not warranted. Yeah. It's yeah. like you're forcing in um, a relationship out of them that they don't probably don't want. Yeah. And given their action, they don't want it. Yeah. And when they don't reciprocate the response that you want, now you hate them for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, mom, who's really wrong? Mm -hmm. And then that drained you mentally saying, no, they were wrong. I'm like, okay, let's say they're wrong. But I'm like, where did you go wrong? Yeah. Right? I'm like, so that means you didn't do anything wrong? 
Yeah. And then, like, I can have these talks with my mom now. Before, you couldn't tell them wrong. Yeah. Mm. Right? Yeah. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, man, don't blame other people for what you want to get out of it. Yeah. It's usually a lack of your own boundaries, actually, that yeah. causes a lot of these things. things mm. yeah. 100%. My mom is a very very much the same. <laughs> like, oh, I don't phone I don't have a phone. I don't have a phone. It's like, okay, but you have expectations. Exactly. So it's actually, you, you didn't have boundaries with them. You were boundaryless. And now that they... You know, ha- they're they're not doing anything wrong. They're just being who they are because they are who they who are. They are. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah. Because you didn't have boundaries around it. Yeah. And then I think speaking of boundary kind of like goes perfectly into the, <laughs> the landscape that we're in, especially when it comes to relationships. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, you know, it's so true though. <laughs> when it comes to boundaries, setting yourself, whether it comes, it doesn't matter whether it's, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, mental, whatever it is, you need to have some sort of boundary that you set for yourself. And... A lot of people don't stick to it. Reason why? Because as you said, they might uh, they might be scared. Um, when you say you do love someone or you build that relationship with someone, it's easy to overlook those boundaries mm. and keep going in that rabbit hole over and over. And now you normalize that. So now you envision what a relationship should be, especially at a young age. Mm. Like I'm an advocate of not dating at a young age. I'm not. Mm. I, I, I've, I, I didn't. Maybe, I mean... Maybe I should have, maybe I shouldn't have. But I'm so curious back, about that. Like, why? So for myself, when I was like, one, I was I was a really shy kid. Yeah. Uh, coming from India, ESL, like in grade 9, 8, 10, 11. Uh, it was just, English was, just, you know, it's so funny. Like, my school in grade 9. So in grade 9, you graduate from there, right? You know how they usually give kids awards? So yeah. all my friends are getting up there. They're getting, one gives me, like, best at math, this, that, blah, blah, blah. I get up there. My goofy ass, they gave me best accent award. I'm what? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it doesn't have sense of accomplishment. My dumb ass didn't realize this is racist and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Someone who's ESL <laughs> <laughs> has a thick ass accent in Punjabi, and they gave me a best award, ac- best accent. I still keep that plate. Yeah. I, I have that plate in my house, and uh, yeah. it, last time my girlfriend came, she's like, why do you have this? I'm like, it's, it's just there for a reminder. I'm like, I, I'm, I won't let go of it. It's always going to be there. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize that. But um, yeah, as I progressed more and more, it was just the environment I saw, uh, even my friends, a lot of my guy friends, I'm like, you're the fucking clowns. Like, I know, I know we swear on this, but I mean, you're the clowns. I'm like, this is what you guys, this is how you treat people? This is what a relationship is? Mm-hmm. And I saw that more and more. That were really away from me. Yeah. I had four good friends that only thing they wanted to do was travel, enjoy each other's companies. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I'd rather do this now. I grow with them. Yeah. Grow, grow personally. So we started traveling. Uh, from grade 12, into university, California, Colombia, Jamaica, like beautiful places. Just travel. So for me, like my personal state of mind wasn't there. One, due to for what I've seen from my parents, uh, it was just toxic. Uh, how they treated each other. I'm like, I don't want to get married. Hell no, I'm good. Is this what marriage looks like? No, I'm good. Mm-hmm. So at early age, I saw that it just made me numb to what a relationship is. I was numb at a very early age. And then when I saw my friends do it, it made it a, even a more big of a reality. I'm like, so my parents are doing it. Y'all doing the exact same thing. Yeah, now I don't want to be. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I don't want to do this. So now I have this skewed perception of that's how every girl are and every guy is. And everybody's damaged, they're messed up. I don't want to be in that position, so I strayed away from it for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And because I know myself, I'm like, uh, even if I was in that position, I know I wouldn't act that way. But I didn't want to be that the healing block for someone to drain what I have. So for me, I strayed away from it. And then my first one, I was I was 22, 21 when I first got into one. And then, funny enough, it was <laughs> it was a muscle girl. <laughs> wow. I know. I mean, he's like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you, a muscle girl? Yeah. But for me, it was just like, I connected with someone that and I And for context, we're saying that because as Punjabi 6, that's yeah. the number yeah. one yeah. thing you're told six. not to do. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the for one context, thing you do yeah. not We're not do. Islamophobic, <laughs> but no, it's just no, the no. one thing you're not supposed to do. <laughs> There's yeah. one thing that you do not go down. But Your for, parents are like, no. Yeah. I didn't even tell my parents. I, I was too scared. Yeah. I was so scared. I'm like, there's no way, but you know. Yeah, I came to the my senses, but you know, yeah. but I learned a lot from it. It made me realize that I do care about my culture a lot. Uh, I think it, it, it's cool to live through that process, but I don't think you realize the in depth it takes, especially when you marry, if you want to marry someone out of religion. Because why? Because their beliefs are going to be just as uh, strong as yours when it comes to they probably want their kids to you know, be around the religion, this, that. So it's like balancing that. It's like you're putting your kid to almost.
Then our culture, like Punjabi, I'm like, no, 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 no. I was just being naive that everything is good, calm, we can figure things out. But, you know, that was just a young me that thinking only thing that mattered was the main moral value that I possessed. I saw in someone, I'm like, ding, 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 ding. I'm good. I yeah. found my person. But there's more to it as you, you know, you grow. So that was the only thing I was looking at at an early age. I'm like, no, all my values align. I'm good. But as you, as you grow, I'm like, no. So for me, it was just, yeah, the environment I saw, I'm like, no chance. I'm not doing this. Um, I was scared, to tell you the truth. And I was scared of rejection as well. I was scared to go up to someone and get rejected. I was always dealt with it like at an early age. So I'm like, I strayed away from that. That's was, that was the main reason why I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going into a relationship at a young age. And I'm glad I didn't. I I'm glad. It helped me grow as a person, made me realize who I really am and what I can actually provide to a person and myself. Hmm. So that's hmm. my whole perspective. What about yourself? You know, let's give everybody inside of our heart poles dating life. What do you want to know? More of a woman's perspective on this. Ask me a question. Yeah. Okay, so both of you can. I mean, I mean, most of the DMs being like, we're gonna talk about relationships. <laughs> hey, yeah. I mean, well, go at it, man. You, what, what do you want to talk about? Where do you but, want but, to start? So, like, so you, much. I think you have a different perspective about how we said, I'm not advocating like dating at a young, yeah. young age. Yeah. Would you say your mind is similar, or would you say like no? Everybody's different. I don't think there's any rules around it, but I think that we do not equip young people. <laughs> Human beings in general don't have very high self worth. So yeah. if you're mm. if you haven't <coughs> been uh, raised with a sense of like a strong sense of worth, worth yeah. yeah, and then you're gonna start dating from that place, it's very challenging. It's very hurtful. It can be upsetting. It can be traumatic. It can be very disconnecting. Yeah. But if you have like a strong sense of will, so strong sense of worth, and you start to date from that place, mm. I think that I'm not saying, I don't think age is a factor in that. I think it's your sense of worth. Like if you're going to mm. enter into relationships as a, as a place to fulfill something, uh, to seek external validation, to um, feel better about yourself, to feel complete, that could, you could be any age. You could be 45 yeah. and doing that. Yeah. Um, so I think like those, like typically most of us first generations have, our parents were busy. Busy, yeah. Um, yeah. They were never taught that. They didn't know any better. They didn't, they were arranged, they were, ex they they experienced were arranged marriages. marriages. You you fell in love with your some, someone after you got married to them. Hmm. So I think a lot of us were not raised with that sense of worth. I mean, not everybody, but most people that I know were not raised with a strong sense of worth, uh, where their where their parents were teaching them like what it means to sh how how to show up in a relationship. Many of us didn't have good relationship models yeah. in our lives, and so I would say like, I know for me, most of my dating experience and my dating history has been from a place of low self worth, mm. and I took a one year break from dating. I made a podcast episode about it too, called Harpo Didi's Dating Sabbatical, <laughs> yeah. and I took that one year to build my worth specifically as it relates to relationships, relationships and now I'm dating from that place mm. I'm dating from a strong place of worth and it's still a practice it's like it's it's like probably like level like two or three it's not level 10 yet but it's just starting, <laughs> starting? you know but yeah. it's it's not zero anymore which is the place from which I was dating before and I don't I didn't start dating till I was 19 20 I mean yeah. I wasn't dating at like 14, 14. 15 like some of the gory kids we know <laughs> yeah. um but I was dating for a very long time up until I would say 26 even 26 to I was dating from a place of really low self-worth. Mm. And that's another thing. I think we, me and Mo talked about the reason why I say I don't advocate a young age as well, because you're not developed as a human. Yeah, your frontal lobe is not developed. Yeah, yeah. like obviously we know about the, like the, you know, the, the ages behind it for a man and a woman. I think yeah. a man is around like 26, woman 24 around there. Yeah. So like when it comes to maturity of it, obviously women mature way older. But for me, I always felt like at such a young age when you're like 17, 18 and you're dating, when you're constrained to someone else's emotional like needs and wants, it hinders your ability to grow, especially at that age. Because like now you're like, okay, I want to do this, but how does this, this impact yeah. the other person yeah. at 18? I'm like, you shouldn't have that thought process. Yeah, because your own foundation and your own blueprint is not built yet. You, yeah, exactly. You don't even know. Who, I didn't even know who I was until literally last year. Hmm. Right. I'm like, a, I'm going to be 28 this year. I didn't know who I was until after 25. Hmm. That's not to say that you can't arrive at that in a relationship, yep. but hmm. okay. you need to have, you need to be with a partner that gives you a lot of space, space. Live, gives you a lot of space and room to figure that out, yeah. okay. which is not what I find is happening in our current climate. <laughs> a lot of people are just dating because they want to have a wedding, not a marriage, a yeah. wedding. 
they want to have this like glitzy glamorous life that you know i want to buy this lingo i want to buy this, this i want to yeah. do that i want to you know i want i want this pre-wedding photo shoot yeah. this and that i think most people in our culture in our community are are together for those reasons okay so then how about hmm, that's an interesting question i'm trying to word it properly Mox is, yeah for the context Mox is because we literally had yeah. while we were stuck in traffic we were having this conversation we, we <laughs> facetime in here we facetime in here <laughs> I literally well, like, had a debate with her all the yeah. time. Mid car, because we didn't know what to do. But I'm like, let me call her. <laughs> yeah. Because Mook is way more conservative. I am a little bit more conservative. Okay. So here, here's a perspective. So uh, the same conversation that we had uh, with Mayor, and um, so nowadays it's a little bit more flipped. Like you hear a lot of stories, stuff like that. How men are not being masculine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's already smiling. I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, men are not being masculine. They're too, they're, uh, how do you say it? They're not holding up their own role. And then we hear the opposite where female are becoming more they're masculine. Men. Alpha. Yeah. Right? They're yeah. becoming, oh, they have this ego and stuff like that. Like why are they becoming so aggressive and, <laughs> and all that sort. So then it's just like, why is that though? Mm. You know, why is that happening? Why, why, like, is it because that, you know the person that they're dating could it be because of the situation where they found that person right because here's my thinking of it is that of course the man has to play his own role right provide for the family uh make sure financials are straight make sure have some goals uh that they're working towards and everything 100 percent agree with that and it, that's the way it should be right but my thinking is that if you're gonna be dating a person that has none of those traits traits yeah. right why are you dating that person in the first place then? yeah because yeah. the thing is, then that's where the tox- toxicity comes from. And then let's say if it doesn't work out, then you have that in the back of your mind that when a, per- nice, uh, when a person that has t- does have those traits, you skip over them. Yeah. Then it just becomes toxic. So I wanted to get your you know, perspective. Oh my God, okay. Yeah. I love this conversation. <laughs> this is like front of mind in my life right now. Yeah. I talk about this all the time. So I, I think that there was a time period where women realized oh i can live on my own oh. i can have my own money i don't have to marry i don't have to like rely on a man to be successful yeah. i can actually quit myself i can go and get a, a career okay, i can have yeah. a, I mean, an education i can have a job i can live on my own i can make my own money so i think that women were like all of a sudden in this gigantic time period very emboldened to be independent mm. women were encouraged to do that they went and did that we all did that somewhere along the way we became there was a shift there was a shift we <laughs> yeah. became too much of a, like i want to be a man, man. Mm-hmm. and we lost our sense of what it means to be feminine, feminine soft yeah. nurturing not in a way where where because i think like the patriarchy and capitalism taught women that what femininity actually is is, is yeah. not real either yeah. what it means to be a woman is to be able to be right like to be feminine in general period is to be not to be in this doing you're not meant to always be doing you're meant to yeah. be a human mm. being and so i think women became a bit disconnected from that and i think men <laughs> men stopped knowing how to relate to women mm. i think that men in general in the world are going through a bit of a crisis because the space that was meant for them mostly is now being encroached on by a lot of women Mm. and women were we're being sold this idea that this is what we need to do to be successful but 70 percent of chronic illness is women Women, so Mm. we are so stressed out we are so disconnected we're so unhappy we're so depressed that it's manifesting into disease in our bodies Mm. because we're disconnected from what it means to be human to be in our essence so i think women don't know how to relate to men men don't know how to relate to women women, and we have all these crazy expectations of one another when Mm. we really should only have like expectations of ourselves (laughs) and i think like this this debate of like men aren't being masculine enough (laughs) well are you being feminine Feminine enough enough. are you grounded in even like the masculinity that women are portraying is hyper like it's like beyond what we should actually be doing right and even like men are men i don't i can't speak i don't i'm not a man so i can't speak to like what's happening to the feminine but i think as a general as a society we have killed the feminine inside of us Mm. men have killed the feminine inside of them and so they have no feelings they don't talk about their emotions (laughs) they don't know how to connect and like have intimacy with men and women like how many guys just hang around and talk about their feelings with their friends they don't Mm. and i think most women have also killed the feminine inside of them because somewhere they learned 
to be feminine is to be weak, weak. which is which is which was a tool of the oppressor yeah and for me personally right now i'm like no i want to find so much power and strength in my own feminine and i want to become so grounded in that femininity that the right balanced Balance, man will yeah. come into my life not the right masculine man yeah but the right balanced, balanced man yeah. where he can be feminine and masculine whenever he needs to be yeah I, and i think one thing i want to touch upon that is um a lot of that stems from also is um in our culture at least like in our like especially in the Punjabi households yeah um the dynamic in the households yeah now let's say you're 20 21 70 like you're a young age impressionable you're, yeah yeah, yeah. so you, you're seeing something in your household your mom is portraying that feminine role that should be played uh that nurturing one a caring one that take care of the household with the dad as a provider like you know that's how it should be but then you see your mom mentally being drained because she's not getting treated right probably i think a lot of people can relate to this i don't know the last time when even like as a dad even i had talks you know i think a lot of people do hey dad go buy flowers for your you know for mom yeah. or do this take her out yeah go for a dinner never no so that kills the woman inside for so long because like, i'm like your mom i'm like dad when's the last time you ever bought a gift ever yeah. screw like last couple i'm like ever yeah i'm like don't you think that hurts her inside yeah knowing or paid that attention to her cared for her yeah i'm like right? don't you think that hurts her knowing that yeah. the person that i'm married to doesn't give a shit about me well and then i would ask like how when was the last time your dad took care of himself yeah mm. right that's what i mean by the feminine inside we don't know how to nurture ourselves let alone other people yeah right we just don't know and if you think about the way masculine and feminine feminine energy actually is the man gives a woman something, something exactly. and she creates it yeah right yeah. that's how that's how children are conceived right yep. you plant a seed she nurtures it it, she cares for it yep. she literally uses her own body to body care for it, it. Yep. i think that's that's usually what like that's how it is right like a man will give a woman a house she'll turn it into a home, home. Mm -hmm. a man will give her give her some land she'll turn it into a garden, garden yep. she'll get he'll give her a seed she'll turn it into children, children yep. but i think men don't know what to give to women anymore because we're like i don't need a man yeah. i don't need a man you know <laughs> yeah. it's like you don't need one sure no, but I think, still i think though like <laughs> nowadays everything is just a want yeah everything's just an optional because the way i see it is just like our purpose like even as men right even just growing up small like we look up to our fathers regardless of what situation it is mm. right like even i tell amen all the time i was like bro like i come from a broken family right i i had to learn a lot i didn't learn about masculinity right because my dad was more in the feminine age yeah the feminine you know, he had to switch because he had to deal with my sister. Right. He wasn't much as worried about me because I was older. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, I had my own situation with that. So I was able to kind of pivot accordingly. Mm. But my main worry was like, what's going to happen to my sister? Yeah. <clears throat> I can figure myself out because I was mm. researching. I was learning how to adapt. You know, I, I couldn't even talk to women. I couldn't even stare at a woman. So for me, it was like the first thing I did was like, OK, screw dating. Let me see how I can talk to a woman, even at mm. a cashier. Mm. So I just that's how I started. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is just... <laughs> <laughs> Mok is innovating the like grocery stores. No, but I mean, that's where I had to start, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where I had to start. So um, what I'm saying is then, the, for me, from my own perspective, because I know I can relate a lot, like even our, we have a long, younger brother. Yeah. Like, I have, to I have to teach him. I'm an old relationship guru. I'm now Seema Anti, whatever mm -hmm. her name yeah. is, right? Yeah. But I just tell him, like, look, you're young. He's, like, what, 19 years old, 18 years old? I was like, I'll, if, you ha if you need advice, right, come to me, and I'll try my best to teach you, right, and give you guidance, right? But the rest is up to you. And, we're, okay, I'm kind of jumping around here. But what I'm saying is that the mentorship is very necessary in this yes. sense. Whether it be a father, whatever it be, for, especially for men. Yeah. I think a lot, of, uh, a lot nowadays is that the men that are, you know in their mid-20s and stuff like that they're using partying they're using bars clubs and all that stuff to not really tackle what responsibility is as a man yeah. and when they hit the 30s 35 then they start crying and bitching about it yeah so yeah. no it's yeah. true man because the thing is I like when we grow up we look at a lot of the stuff, stuff yeah. right we look at you know another family how how the father's treating the son how they're hanging out you know how, how they're teaching them what's, what's responsibility how to go through hardship we weren't taught we weren't taught that yeah right yeah. and i think that's where it falls off is just that masculinity yeah. um you see a lot of men that are committing suicide 
because they don't know how to deal with it's emotional re- regulation. Highest, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. where does it all start off? It starts off with who, who is leading you, yeah. right? Who's teaching you all? Because we have a lot of anger, yeah. right? So how do you control that anger, though? Yeah. You can't control it yourself. I had a really tough time. Yeah. I, I almost quit, committed uh, suicide twice wow. because of it. Yeah. So I had to learn a lot because I didn't have much friends. Amr, I met, when, when, when did we meet? Swarm. Back the in swarm like grade basketball 10, grade nine. in grade nine, <laughs> mm. and then we didn't keep connected. It was like honestly a couple of years ago that we stayed connected. I was a dip connect. kid that you didn't want to get in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I didn't have a, a lot of the yeah. friends. The, the the influence that I had around me. Yeah. It was drugs. It was nothing else. Like I just had sports. Yeah. Sports was my outlet. Sports was my avenue of where shit was going on home. I would go on the field at 11 p.m. Um, didn't know. Wasn't able to eat. Learned how to make food. Yeah. yeah, it's probably grilled cheese every day or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But so what I'm saying is that, for my own perspective, of course, you know, this is my own um, story in that sense. Mm. Is that if I had someone growing up that would teach me how to become masculine, right? To do all this stuff, right? I wouldn't be in the same position that I am mm-hmm. right now. And I think a lot of kids nowadays, men, boys especially, um, like we'll see that. We'll see this, oh, single, you know, I don't need a man. I don't need this. You do need a man. <clears throat> you need. It's not a want. You need. Because a woman trying to raise a child, a boy himself, will not. Because you won't be able to discipline a child. I'm not saying. Both ways. You know, physically decide. Well, because your father is actually for both, <clears throat> yeah. uh, like all children, is your, yeah. is your bridge to the outside world. Yeah. Your mother is your connection, connection to your inner, inner world, world because yeah. you were inside of her. Oh, yeah, yeah. But your father is your bridge and your connection to the outside world. Yeah. So if you don't have that, you don't actually know how to relate to mm-hmm. the outside world. Yeah. You yeah. need it. Your yeah. mom can't, You she can't be your dad. You can't, in the same way that you can't be raised by a single father, you can't be raised by a single, single mother, mother in that way. It's yeah. hard. I mean, people do it all the time. You, circumstances happen. Yeah. Right? But, th- but then it's just like, well, is there a stati- uh, statistic, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to pin <laughs> pin on women. Yeah. Right. What I'm trying to say is that there's uh, statistics that majority of men, uh, majority of people that are in jail, men that are in jail are from I'm 70% percent that are single women. Single yeah. women households. Single mothers. Yeah. Why is that? Right. And then there's a, I don't know what the exact statistics are, but then it's the opposite for a ma- for a father. Father can discipline. Uh, <laughs> both genders. They're right? resentful. But here's the thing, like you were just saying, like a woman like a, a female that's growing up, right? That femininity is not there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm just saying, like, both, like, the guidance from a father, from a mother is very important. Mm-hmm. Having a two-parent household is very important. I think this, this is kind of going to the next question as well, is this whole thing of, like, trying to run away from problems that are happening within a relationship yeah. and calling divorce an easy way out. Like, why is it such, why is such, a, why is that, though? Yeah. You know? She hit them in the head on the nail, though. People are rushing into it because they feel like the time is ticking or something. Yeah, they're it's rushing like the to marriages. It's like, man, I think one of the things that you said was like nowadays, it's that uh, capitalistic way we look at life, especially like I, I don't know those like the scenes of surgery, but thing is like, what's being promoted, like especially when it comes to social media as well. Mm. Everything is tips of our like fingers, like when it comes to guys, drug men. When it comes to girls, only fan is so enticing to them. Mm. So guess what? So now they put themselves out there in a way at a young age where you're exposed. A- as a woman, like, that's something that, you know, I feel like you need to preserve almost in a sense where that's something that you own, right? And then now you're, you're putting it out for the whole world to see. It's like sometimes when you do go out in the actual real world, you might feel like not naked like as in like actual visual like but you might feel naked as a person that mm. insecurities that are kicking in because now it's like you lost in touch of what reality is you know and i think that's what the issue is nowadays even with guys it's like for them okay get into drug easy money oh, i'll get all the girls mm. you uh you're at the same corner every weekend in the club yeah telling all the girls you're getting validated for that time period of frame but Four year passes by, have no personal development has been done just because you think this is what life is, right? And now, and that's what's being promoted now. This is what normal li- normal is. Like amount of time, like you know, I, I have this debate a lot with a lot of people. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't, like OnlyFans. I don't, I don't condone it. 
whether it's a man or a woman. And I, I don't try to you know, subject it to it, oh, women can't do it. Man or a woman, you know, that's something, especially like if there's something sexually explicit, that should be, you should preserve for your partner, whoever it is, because that is something that you should cherish, mm. right? But nowadays they're like, no, like, we live in a different world, but I'm like, no, we do not. You guys just want to this be normalized so you guys are not judged or you don't look at it as like, oh, I'm not doing anything wrong, but in reality you are. So you're selling your soul to the devil, but you think you're not, mm. you know? What's your outlook on that when it comes to that? Because, like, you know, you look at the both spectrum. Because now you, you live in Surrey. You have seen, like, the drug violence. A lot of the guys do get into yeah. it. And, you know, vice versa. Even with girls, like, now it's like, may, they put themselves more explicitly with the clothes they wear and stuff like that. They are tend to be more exposed just because of why? Because it gets them more in clicks and sell. Because sex sells. That's, mm. that's what always been sex sells. So for them, be like, okay, sells. I'm getting my money up. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it. And it's the same thing with drugs. Okay, this is how much it makes. Okay, I'm gonna get more. Mm. I'm gonna get more. It's like the same thing, but a different perspective. But it's the same thing, though. Well, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't like to pass any judgments and uh, make any comments, comments around sex work because I am a firm believer in people should do whatever they, what want, they want with their bodies. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's not for me to judge whether it's good or not. Yeah. I, I don't do it because that's not aligned with my values, values and yeah. that's, that's that. But I will say that I find that at the core of what drives all human behavior is belonging, is feeling connected, it's feeling loved. So love, connection, belonging are really all three of the same, same things thing. yeah. for me. And what really drives all of us is belonging. My favorite understanding of why people go into gangs is that they're looking for a sense of belonging. belonging. So I did my mm. master's on this. It's like, yeah. what are the push and pull factors for young people who go into gangs, particularly young South Asian boys? The push and pull factors typically, if you look at like what most of them had in their homes is absent fathers, uh, maybe alcoholism. Rhythm, yeah. um, their parents might have been first generation or like immigrants, immigrants and they were first generation. Yep. Uh, language barriers, not maybe having enough money where they were like wearing cool clothes. But then you also see that a lot of these homes are affluent, like they have big houses, nice cars. cars yep. A lot of it is not like consistent parenting. Their parents mm, were, yep. their checklists were different. different so it's yep. like, as a parent, I have to provide for my child. I have to pay for their education. I have to buy a home. I have to buy them a car. And maybe if they want to go buy a Louis Vuitton purse, I want to yeah. be able to afford that. I'm a good parent. Whereas the child's checklist could have been, I needed my dad to ask me how my day was. Mm. I needed to go to Disneyland with my parents on vacation because Stacy's freaking parents went <laughs> and took her. Yeah. So like, I think at the core of what, what drives all human behavior is belonging and well, connection. Yeah. That's what Us true. even being here talking on this podcast, we want to feel like we're connected. connected. We want other people to lean in and feel connected. So I think a lot of people have different ways to cope and find that sense of belonging. Some people... Some people try to find it through drugs, through alcohol, through toxic relationships, yeah. marriage, right? Yeah. And actually, to your point around like the divorce piece, I think we live in an instant gratification generation. <laughs> I can download an app, <laughs> make a profile, swipe left and right yeah, all, day all day long, and I can yeah. think I have options. I don't. It's not meaningful connection. connection yeah. So I think instant gratification drives a lot of us. And the reason why I think it's easier for us to start and end relationships is because we don't actually have to put in that much work, work anymore. Exactly. Um, because it's not giving us dopamine. I was having this conversation with my parents last night. I said, when I was a kid, we used to watch TV on live. We had to watch commercials. We weren't allowed to forward anything. If you mm. want to watch a half an hour episode, I mean, actually, it was like a 20-minute episode stretched into 30 minutes, right? You mm. couldn't forward anything. You couldn't record it. You had to sit through the two, three-minute commercial. Even songs, like when I used to listen to Hindi songs, they were like six minutes long. <laughs> yeah. These days, you're competing with 30-second Instagram videos. Yeah. If you can't convey a message, you guys are going to turn this episode into clips, clips. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you can't, if, you can't, catch, if you can't catch people in 30 yeah. seconds, you've not done your job. job yeah. Yeah, yeah. So true. That it's is true. dopamine. True. That yeah. is, we, are, we are completely fucked. It's so true. It's just the way it we is. We talked now. about it with Ronit, remember? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, no matter where we go, it's like we're going to the bathroom, our phone's coming with us. Yes. And yeah, even yeah. if we forgot our phone, we're going back to yeah. get our phone, then go you to don't the even, bathroom. You don't yeah. even shit with so, presents yeah, anymore. Yeah, we don't. It's <laughs> like that. It's people. And the crazy part is, like, it's an addiction at this point. It's just bad as drugs because now you can literally, your day will go by hour, two, three, and you sat in the same position that you started off with, especially in the morning. Yeah. Like, I. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Was it? 
Athlean X, you know, you know Athlean X. Oh, Athlean tra- So yeah. I, I watch his videos a lot, a lot in the morning. He's like, man, the first thing you should do is like, don't even look at your phone. Yeah. Two, drink a glass of water, get your body hydrated. Because he's like, when you don't hydrate your body early in the morning, it messes up your mental cognitive decision and how you operate. Yeah. And it, it messes up you mentally. It drains you early in the morning. So one, when you already wake up on the wrong side of the foot early morning, it messes up your whole day. Yeah. Now you're like, okay. Man, another 20 minutes not going to kill me. Another half an hour is not going to kill me. Now the whole day is gone by. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, now you feel shitty yourself. Yeah. You're like, fuck, I didn't do anything today. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't do this. I didn't yeah. do that. And it, it's a scary world, man. Well, most of us are living in survival mode. And the reason that we're on our phones just swiping up and down, side to side, is because we're, we're numbing. We're literally numbing. numbing yeah. We want to run away from this deep longing that we have for connection and love. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's another thing you said. Dating websites, like they're so apps or whatever they are. These they're so, they're so easy. Yeah. They're swiping, swiping. For me, I never, I never downloaded. I just felt wrong. I don't know wow, why. Wow, lucky you. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't get on it. My friend told me he's like, download it. He's like, trust me, bro. He's like, he's like, you'll meet someone. I'm like, no, I can't. It just, morally, it felt so wrong to me because yeah. I'm, I grew up very conservative. I grew up in a band where we had like maybe 200 people living there. Mm. Lived there for ten years. I wouldn't even call that conservative. You grew up communally. Yeah. You yeah. grew up with connection, connections, like yeah. real connections. connections yeah. Right? So for me, it's like everybody you're meeting every every evening. You're walking to the Gurdwara. You're walking back. Yeah. To home with half of the pen with you. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. talking with everybody. I didn't know what a phone was until like what grade eleven, grade twelve. Yeah. That's when I got my first phone. Like yeah. it, when it comes to the Instagram, I was and the thing is back then like what happiness was. That's what it was for me personally. That's mm. what it was. Seeing everybody come together. Like my mom would have everybody in the evening, do langar, do seva, do this. Everybody's not worried about what, what the other auntie's doing. Oh, on Instagram, call it this, that. Oh, maybe Snapchat, but not in yeah. Like it, not it auntie, present, and everybody. It was a yeah. present life, right? Yeah. A life out of survival mode. And now it's like, nope, it's none of that. It's ruining everything. Yeah, there are some good parts to it, but the way we're using it, uh, we're using it f- uh, negatively, whether it comes to relationship, whether it comes to how we view life, what we want, and tying that back together to the whole aspect of relationship, I feel like it's just, um, it's eroding our minds and it's giving us an unrealistic life that we can't attain. It's easy mm-hmm. to look at someone like, oh my God, they're like, this person's dating that, like, look, they have everything is perfect, like, mm-hmm. this is how we should be. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no. I can't make hundred thousand a year, like stuff like like a hundred million or whatever the unrealistic yeah. goal is. Like, yeah. I'm like, that's not what it is. But then in your head, you're embedding that's what it is. You want to emulate your life after that. You want to look like that. You want to move like that. But in reality, you can. But how? What would? And one thing we're big on is like giving a message out to the world. Because one of the questions we got from the topic was, was, should I go into dating when I'm not financially secure? Mm. And and the other part was it right. let's say if i was secure with my person and they don't mind my hustle and ambition should i still date because hmm. like if a person does understand it we'll just we'll just start yeah. <laughs> I think we'll, just we'll, we'll, we'll get into the questions yeah, yeah. that one is like a, i think okay, it was a, one, it'd be cool uh, to integrate it with how we talk about relationships it'd be perfect right because it is an interesting one okay so when is the right time to date should men figure out their financials first before dating? And what, it, what if you meet a woman who understands your hustle and ambitions? Should you still say no? I think the first part, financially, you have to be. Uh, I don't care. Uh, you can't go in there like, if you're, if you're financially not stable, how are you going to, you can't support yourself that mean. How are you going to support another person in your life? I genuinely think, I, you can't. It, it's not sustainable. Reason why? Because nowadays, like, you do have to put an effort in. And for to, you to do put that effort into someone, mm. you need a little bit of peace of mind in what you're doing in life. When what does it mean to you when you're not financially secure? Uh, if you don't have that, what does it mean? Like if you don't have that, I feel like for someone who's not financially secure, if you don't, one, you don't have a job. It's <laughs> people who do not have a job and they're dating. What if they have a job, yeah. but they're not like they don't making have, money, like yeah. money like that? Yeah, that's fine. As long as they understand what their wants and needs are and the other person that you have conveyed those needs and wants mm-hmm. and they understand you, there's no harm in it. Mm-hmm. There's people out there that maybe make 30, 40,000 a year. They live mm-hmm. the most happiest life. And that is perfectly fine. Someone who's making millions, they live a happy life. There is no value on um, like 
a certain amount of money that you should be making, but there should be a sense of, okay, as a person, how do you feel where you are in life? So that's what I mean by like being financially stable, but like, okay, mm. what I'm doing right now, does it provide me stability? And if another person were to come in and if it were to convey this message, be like, hey, this is what, how much I make, this is what life is for me. If they're okay with that, that's perfectly fine to go in it. But if you just be like, oh, they can, yeah, let's see. And then now you feel that pressure, be like, no, I got to buy this for her. Oh, no, she says she likes this, but it's out of your budget, but you don't want to say no. So now you're picking up loans to buy something when you shouldn't be. Because I have mm. seen that. People pick up loans to buy gifts for guys or girls. Both ways, I've seen it. It's like, you're picking up loans to buy gifts? Are you okay? Mm. Mm. Why is that? <laughs> mm. That's not complete. I don't think that's fine. Like, you, you can say, be like, hey, I can't afford it right now. I will work to a point where I can and if that person's, you know, they reciprocate that in a positive manner, that's a beautiful thing. If they yeah. don't, then you know that person's not for you, right? Yeah. What do you have to say that? I have a different take <laughs> on okay. that. I think that to think that you have to be X, Y, and Z before you get in a relationship mm. is wrong. Suggests that who you are currently is not good enough. Mm. And I don't think that's fair. Okay. Because on the flip side, for me, I've I've always thought I have to be a bit more healed. I have to be a bit more self uh, self aware. I have to be a little bit more skinny. I have to be um, maybe a little bit more further along in my career, and then I'll be worthy, worthy. of a partner or hmm. of a relationship. Which I think is wrong because we are all inherently valuable, and we all have innate value. And yes, I want someone who has ambition and like has something that they're working towards and something that they're passionate about. Um, like for example, what doesn't work for me is a nine to five. Like I don't want to be with someone who has a nine to five. Yeah. I, I want someone who is like passionate, passionate and like wants it, to yeah. change the world, you know? Yeah. That's what I want. But if he is not making money doing that yet, but has a plan and shows up consistently and is growing towards that, um, I'm not going to be like, uh, yeah, come see me in a year when yourself. you start making, yeah. when that becomes profitable. <laughs> like, mm. it's kind of, I, I have a different it's take a on that. It's a slap to the face if someone, yeah. I mean, someone were to say that yeah. to you. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really important that you have, um, you, you understand that you have value, value. Just beyond what your production is, beyond what you create. Like, you have value. Um, and okay. I, I, I actually was dating somebody who had a job that was not very inspiring to him or to me. Um, he woke up, he was, it was a remote job. He woke up maybe half an hour before he started. Um, and then he would work for eight hours and then it would end. And then he would probably take a shower at the end of that. Like he wouldn't take a shower even before Crazy. he would take a shower and then he would go do a Vada good with his friends. <laughs> and I was so bugged by it. He made consistent money. money he made yeah. a decent change. Right. Yeah. And I was talking to my therapist about how I felt so bugged by that. She's like, what if he made enough money to just. Uh, provide for your family. I was like, it's not enough. I don't mm. like, I, it's not enough for me that like being disconnected from your work was that you know, like that, that alienation. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that. So I think like we all have different okay. things that we like, mm. you know? So for me, it's not, you have to make six figures. Yeah. You, you know, like have That's a nice. plan. Yeah. If you want to have children, you got to <laughs> yeah, make more you money. Plan. You do. Yeah. But, um, that, that, that's my take on it. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. No, that I think, I might I, be an I anomaly. No, no, no. I didn't. I mean, I haven't looked at it that way because, like, obviously, we look at from what we, what you have seen, what your blueprint is. So that's an interesting take. Uh, I think that does, it my, does make my sense. My father though. is a provider. Yeah. He's a provider before he is a father, father and, a, and, a, and, a, yeah. and a husband. Hmm. And what did that get us? Get us true. What I mean, I love him. He loves us. He tries his best. But I would have rather had a father and a and a husband be for my mother present. than a than a provider. Hmm. Because the providing will always happen. It'll happen. It'll it'll happen. You know, mm. your God will bring you what you are meant to have anyway. But if you're gonna have a, a an emotionally disconnected partner, and if you're dating from that place, I think if you're dating again, it goes back to dating dating from a place of low self worth. You're already setting yourself up in a way when you're like, I don't have enough worth. I'm not deserving. Yeah. I have yeah. to be better. Mm. Okay. So then, interesting. But what do you say it takes to become a provider then? What, what are the qualities? Takes? What are the qualities? So I actually really think that what it means to be a masculine is to just hold space. To like, to be a container, to like be strong, be solid, hmm. be grounded, grounded, to just allow action to arise. Like if, if that means, you know, being able to provide a home for your family, that's stability, hmm. right? Yeah. Um, being able to bring something like, you just bring something to, to the table and the feminine alchemizes it. To, oh, okay. that's, that's what I think. So I think what it means to be a provider, I'll tell you a story. I was dating this guy recently and he was like in his late thirties and he's like, 
I don't get it. I'm good looking. <laughs> I'm attractive. Yeah. I'm healthy. Yeah. I have a good job. I make good money. I own my own home. Why am I still single? I said, hey, buddy, you and your partner are going to have to choose coffins for your parents. You might have financial instability. Yeah. Mm. You might have a hard time conceiving children. One of you might lose their jobs. You might have to move. Your six pack is not going to matter mm. when that happens. <laughs> but we think what it means to be a man is to be sexy and six pack and have a lot of money. Da, da, da. Mm. But I said, if you cannot stand shoulder to shoulder with your partner in life's most vulnerable times, yeah. tu kala banda. Mean tu kala banda, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like That's so true peace though. of mind, stability. I don't want to worry about you out there cheating. I don't want to worry about you out there being toxic, <laughs> gambling your money away, drinking yeah. your money away. Like, I want you to be good. I want you to be consistent. I want you to communicate. communicate yeah. That to me is provider. You are providing me a peace of mind. You are providing me stability and mm. joy. You are providing me, like... The peace of mind that you... you soil to plant yeah. into, mm. right? You're, you're, I can tend to this garden with ease. Mm. That's what it means to be a provider, not six figures in your bank account. Mm. But it is a huge component, though, financially. If it's, if it's part of your values. Yeah, but don't you think it's that. majority of all women want that type of stability? Financially is a big thing. I think it's if you're if you if that's your definition of freedom. Yeah. If your definition of freedom is I need six figures to live a very free life. Yeah. Absolutely. Hundred mm. percent. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Maybe that comes from a place, right? That like is really important to you. Yeah. But to me, freedom is like peace of mind. Joy is freedom Joy, to me, yeah. and I want a partner that brings that level of provides me a level of freedom in that way. I might be completely wrong. I'm only mm. 27. What do I know? <laughs> I've never been in a long-term committed relationship. I'm not yeah. married. I don't know. Mm. But I think for me, when I'm seeking partnership, that's what I'm seeking, seeking. is like, do am I worried? Am I going to sleep thinking you're in a different city? You might be cheating on me. You went to your friend's bachelor party. Are you talking to somebody Tell else? <laughs> but then don't you think then if, if your assumptions is, is that type of man, then why be in that relationship? Totally. But then people don't have the willingness to walk away these days. Well, again, That's we don't want to be thing. alone, yeah. right? Yeah. It's terrifying to think, okay, breadcrumbing is huge. Most of yep. us breadcrumb. breadcrumb We're like, yeah. I'm just going to take whatever little, little bit, bit I'm bit. getting because mm -hmm. I don't think I'm worthy or deserving of this whole pie, mm. right? Financially, I think we always come back to that financial part because, I mean, okay, first of all, I live in Vancouver, so cost of living is very Expensive, high yeah. if i want to have a certain kind of lifestyle sure i need like to but money. to think that i have to find that in a partner and not have to work on that like you attract what you are well, exactly. so if your values are scarce if your mindset is scarcity then that's what you're going to attract. attract but if you're yeah. like i'm abundant then that's what you're going to find and then god will give you more anyway be like oh she's abundant let me give her more yeah right that is so true though. i think this like financial thing is something we hang over men in the same way that like women have standards like mm. we like there's a lot that we actually go through in terms of like our building like our deservingness and our worthiness mm. i think it's this financial piece and the reason i don't i fucking hate this like high value man thing <laughs> is because you can have a very high value man who will buy you a g-wagon but yeah. he treats you like, like shit, shit. Mm. he doesn't respect you he doesn't understand you he has no integrity that to me is not a high value man i feel like so then where, where do you find the balance between the two then because then if you're looking for a man that has a stability, specifically in financial, financial wise, right? But then let's just say he has his, his mindset, he has options, right? Um, because of his status, because of, you know, his reputation. But then you also have a man who's, I want to say it's humble, but it's taking him time. He has a, he, he's working towards that he wants to do to become into that high value man. Yeah. So my thing is just then, I mean, it's all about patience then at that point. Yeah, he'll, he's going to last longer. He's going to be around in your life for much longer. No, 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 but then we got to flip it then. How long is a woman going to last in that relationship then? Again, because she has that, all that influence. Yeah, I think it depends on your values. I really think it depends on your values. You have to find a person that is values yeah. aligned with you. But values. then is the, there's the issue then what I'm saying is just then there's this whole thing like, oh, why can't I find a man? You can, I'm pretty sure you've, uh, I'm pretty sure women come, like men approach women. Mm. You just say no, because it's just not the man that you're looking for. Because everything, like majority of women have, I would say, have all the same expectations from a man. Financially, physically, mm. mentally, and all that sort. Well, what they don't understand is what it takes to become that, that man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? How much, they're like, oh, you know what, this man, he's like, 
in his 30s why hasn't done anything and stuff like that i was like do you understand how difficult it is to build yeah right how how financial like if we're going to talk about entrepreneurs how long does it take for an entrepreneur mm. to become successful yeah. but i and think this is going to so much debt a lot of the stuff it comes from like a skewed perspective as well because we as men we look up to the wrong shit like i, I i'm we talk about andrew trade man he someone that goes into this rabbit hole of just fuckery I remember one I'm time so happy you said that. Like he go I remember one time he was talking about how there's certain things I do I, I don't mind what he says when he talks about how managing your know, get your stuff like mentally be there, get your shit together, like get all that stuff is great. But when he goes on a rabbit hole be like, as a high value man, if you're making X amount of money, your wife is getting cheated on and I'm like you think my wife I'm like, What? What do you t- what mm. do you promote by saying that? Like yeah. what do you promote? Like genuinely though. And yeah. now if I'm 13, 14, 16, because everybody has a phone these days or a tablet or something, mm. I'm seeing that as a kid. I'm like, okay, so if I make millions, I get to do whatever I, I, I want. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And I can cheat on a woman because that's, it's okay. He did it and his wife didn't say anything, but that's what he's saying. Mm. He might not yeah. be doing it, but that's what he's putting out because that's what catches the most support. Mm. And that's always been a big, you know, advocate of like, man, don't just follow what these people say. <laughs> don't yeah. blindly, what he says is so negative a lot of the time. And look at the, some of the works that he has done, right? I think women take relationships and sex and then put it in that place that's the large gaping hole that is self-worth. And mm. I think men take money and sex and put that, put that into in it. that same large gaping hole. I think that's what happens. But that's just how it's been all the time, right? Yes, but I don't actually right. think that that's how we're innately supposed to be. I think it's something that we've been taught and fed and conditioned into. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. I mean, it's, it, at the end of the day, it is the values that have been taught. Yeah, and you can choose not to do that. You can choose not to choose relationships from that yeah. place. It takes a lot of work, and you might be alone for a very long time yeah. because those people are far and few, and there's not that many of them in the pool. Hmm. Yeah. But you'll find them. You'll find them. You'll yeah. eventually find them. I'm working with this woman who's a coach. Her name is Sandeep Gill, and she is a, like, I would say self-worth, love, dating oh, did, coach. Did she, she made that? Uh, She's not married. The, no, okay. But who is that one person that uh, she has a platform where she talks about a lot of relationships? Yeah, worth the wait, love. This is her, I think. And her did she want to marry the Gora? Or she's engaged? not married to him, but they, but she is dating. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, her partner yeah, yeah, is yeah, white. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think I, remember, I sent you that her page. I'm like, yo, her page is interesting because yes. she talks about the concept oh. of what a high value man is. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I saw that real. All the time. I saw that real. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think um, I, f- I forget where I was going with her when I started this. Now, yeah. <laughs> why did I bring her up? But in any case, I think like. She talks about like worth the wait love. Like that is her coaching package, worth the wait. It's like you have to wait. You have to consider it worthy enough to wait for it. And you don't want to settle. You don't want a breadcrumb. You want to wait for the entire pie. What is settle then? Settling? (laughs) Shrinking yourself. I'm asking those questions. Shrinking yourself. But what's shrinking in that sense? Like does that mean that going into a relationship you're shrinking? No, it's when when you be with someone that you know you shouldn't be with, but you're doing just because of family pressure, yeah. societal pressure, he has a good job, his, everything on paper looks great, but in, on the inside, you know you shouldn't be with them. Even when you're with there's someone who's like constantly cheating on you mm. or like is not reflective of who you are, you're settling then too. But let's say, let's say the man's not cheating. What's, what if he's that, I mean, again, where it is high value. Yeah. And I mean, like across all boards, he has his life figured out. So, for example, if I was still dating that guy that woke up half an hour before his work started and then yeah. he got off work and then he took a shower, that guy was really nice. Yeah. He was nice. Okay. Your butt. But <laughs> I would have been settling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, was- but then it's just like, okay, well, if he had all that, I mean, he didn't have structure. I'll say that much. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have yeah. any structure at all. But what I'm saying is that, let's say if he had structure, he had a purpose in regards to like, you know, even though he had like, like he had a nine to five, he had the money and a lot of store, he's taking care of himself physically. Mm. Then, would you? I don't know. I'm very delusional, and I firmly believe that I will get a hundred percent of what I want. I mean, not. It, it, I it, am so delusional. No, that yeah. that's fair though, because that's what she goes for too, right? And then I think one thing uh, we were talking about this earlier too, because even with like uh, Lucho and stuff like that, he always like talks about it, and and that he was he was telling me. One thing, it's like, the reason why we say financially you have to be secure because now everything is so costly. You have to be financially secure to even have a kid. It costs you, what, like average 20000 a year. 20000 You can't sustain that mm. in an average household. Imagine if you're in a middle family, middle household family. In, okay, let's take BC, for example. What's the co- average cost of a house? Million? Crazy. Easy. Even the lower lands. It's like $3,000 yeah. to rent a shoebox. Yeah, right? <laughs> so think about that. A million-dollar house. 
you need to make an average of upwards of two, two to three hundred. Yeah, but isn't that just basic survival at this point? Why is that so like a testament so of you your relationship? To, but but that's what I'm saying. You have to be financially secure in a sense to support that lifestyle because you can't you can't maintain yourself, especially in Vancouver. You can't sustain. What yourself. if you were just happy with something smaller? Or if you're so happy with small, then yeah, then go crazy. Then, then, then I don't. I, if those people like happy living, I'm not saying it's not important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I'm not why saying it's not like important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it's not the, the number yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah. most important. Thing. But the thing is, it's the what if. But it's always if, a what if. What if what? what? It, it's what <laughs> yeah, if. What, yeah. if, what, what, if, what, if what, what if you're just happy with it? How long does happy sustain? I actually think that love is not enough. Sorry, guys. Not yeah. just love is not enough. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of other ingredients that are important in the cake, mm. and. Uh, peace which you know you might not have yeah, if you don't have financial stability mm. um is very important. important that's true interesting i think you gotta be happy with what you have and if another person comes along that ride and if they can seek joy and happiness in that ride man go for it as long as you can as long as you can make something out of it and i think you can make something truly beautiful out of it i don't think an x amount of money as you said can it doesn't uh, define what you can get out of a relationship mm-hmm. or not too. So, you know, I think I, you're right on that. I think people just need to be more open. Yeah. Just have a more open uh, mindset about that because a lot of people, yeah. they, they don't want to have an open mindset because I could be kind of like, no, man, Harper, you ch- chat and shit. You got to have this amount of money. If you don't have the <laughs> money, you ain't shit. Like, yeah. for me, yeah. it doesn't, it gave yeah. me no good saying that. Yeah. It, it just only reflects on other people when they see that. I'd be like, damn, okay, fuck, I shouldn't do that then. Well, I mean, I made my <laughs> list of non-negotiables and, um, Salary is not on that oh, no, list. Yeah. I think for me it was. And you hear about these non-negotiables. There are like hundred things on that list. <laughs> yeah, there's nice oh, to have the non-negotiables. <laughs> but on my non-negotiables is a career that he's passionate about. Yeah, okay. I think that's, that's key. more okay. important to me. Because it shows that ambition and then what he's really, you know, working towards. Because that it, will last ambition, you a lifetime. Exactly. That's good. That's it will good. literally last you a lifetime. Because that's what's instilled in you, and then if I showcase, it's uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I think another question that kind of well, I want to tie it in here. Well, obviously we're not professional when it comes to this type of field. So nobody, yeah. you know, come out. Who the fuck are you guys? But yeah. it was about that uh, coming out um, to your oh. parents. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that one. So uh, where it, is it? Where is it? It was about um, LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah, it was right at the, it's the first one of the first questions. So like, how do you come out as a someone, a kid that's in the closet? That's when it comes to the mm. LGBTQ two plus community, yeah. yeah, and especially in a South Asian community, that shit is almost frowned upon. Mm. For, and so, being in that environment, how do you decipher that environment to come out? Because I have dealt with a couple of people where okay. they be like, my kid, uh, one of my kid, uh, one of my siblings are going through that. I'm go, they're like, I'm gonna stand up for them no matter mm. what. Even my parents don't. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna help them understand. Yeah. And then, but like, how do you decipher that? I am what would you advise I'm you guess, not sorry? a queer person and I've never had to experience this. So I, I mean, I, I will only be able to relate to it so Still far. far yeah. I have queer friends and um, I actually got one of this as a question. I got this as a question on my own um, oh, okay. Ask Carpo yeah. Didi form. Did and you? so I actually asked my friend Ritesh, who is an incredibly talented florist in our community here, to sort of help me arrive at that. Um, I, I don't remember what he said because I didn't, I haven't uh, really delved into what he said. It was a seven minute voice note, so I haven't listened to it yet. (laughs) But um, what I would say is like, you have to gauge your own personal safety. Cause I'm relating it to like, as a brown girl, there's a lot that I've had to do and say, I've had to like come out to a lot of things in my own home. Um, And I always had to gauge my personal safety. And there were, sometimes there were like girls who were like, I can't do that because my relationship with my parents is different. Different, There's abuse in my home. There's this in my home. So I always say like gauge your personal safety. Mm -hmm. If you feel like it's going to endanger you, it's going to endanger your life, then it might not be the wisest thing to do. And actually connect with other people who have membership in the same community. Mm -hmm. So go find other queer people. There are Mm. queer South Asian organizations in your communities. Um, Follow people on social media that inspire you that are in the queer community. And see what they've done. Like, see how they did it, how they navigated it. And the other thing is, like, we also have to be very comfortable with the consequences of who we wish to be. So if you, if like, what's more important to you? Having peace and intimacy with your parents and your family or being who you are yeah, being out and queer mm-hmm. yep. and being gay like is that more important to, to you, you yeah. then choose that path and then you have to surrender to the consequences of mm. it so if you are like i this is the hill i'm gonna die on then you have to be prepared because mm. that is the hill that you will die on then you yeah, know yeah. um so i would say those things um i think it sucks that queer people in our world have to come out 
like I think it sucks. You yeah. can't just be who you are because I I personally think queer people are the blueprint for authenticity in our world. They have to pretend. They have to be who they are, even when the world is saying like you're not allowed to not be this. Be, yeah. mm. So I I I could never understand that struggle. But this is how I've arrived at understanding even a little bit of it. Like gauge your personal safety, find people that will support you or can inspire you, uh, yeah. and and really have like a strong group of like people who can provide you kinship like you said like my siblings i'm like you're the, per the person siblings think, like yeah. i'm gonna stand up for them no matter what like have that one safe space like build safety if you don't have safety build safety, safety. like is there somewhere you can go do you have enough money saved up in case you have to move out oh, well, yeah. like don't just do these things just out of like a whim right mm. like I always think that the best thing you can do is to really be there for yourself. Self, yep. So even me, like I, I want to move out and I, I know it was going to be hard. So what did I do for two years? I saved my money. My friends are in Europe right now. I did not go on a girl's trip to Europe because <laughs> yeah. I needed to save, save my money. money. Yep. You know, you got to like t set yourself up tangibly to be like, okay, if I have to be on my own, can I do it? Mm. If I have to bear the consequences of who I wish to be, can I do that? Do yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, was, uh, I mean, you give your perspective on it. I mean, nothing is like, it's hard, man. Like, I, for we me, were talking about this. Everyone's like, yo, I don't know how to say it. It's just hard, man. Because, like, how, who am I to say, be like, no, you can't be, like, you know, like a queer. Or you can't be gay. Like, who am I to say? Hmm. I'm like, you know, and then you have came across other people. But, like, man, like, a lot of end up people do end up taking their lives just due to the fact that yeah. they can't live to the fullest. And as sad as that sounds, it's like... It, it's, it is really sad, but again, it comes down to, like, you know, the social economics of the environment you grew up in. What you see is what you become, mm. right? And a lot of the time I tell them, I'm like, make sure, now, especially nowadays, man, this is the message throughout to everybody. Make sure, even no matter with your partner, whoever you are, marriage, have an open-end discussion. Have a healthy open-end discussion where you're able to come down and sit down and talk rather than, you know, get into an argument and just go back and forth and turn it into something that you know you can talk it out because I'm, I'm big on that i tell my girlfriend all the time i mean listen whatever i do wrong you think i'm doing wrong you come to me and have that ability to have the discussion and we'll go from there and when you provide that environment i feel like you allow yourself even if you bring your kid to flourish in that environment because they have the open space of mind mm. to if if my kids see that they want that they're like, oh, wow, like, this is beautiful. I want that one day, right? So from an early age, your kid's seeing that. If you're early age, your kid's seeing that, like, they're bickering about the it. And so now you're deciphering the world. But obviously, the kid's already going to decipher the world from their own lens anyways. But now they're on their own from every perspective there is. They're deciphering everything on their own. So they'll be like, okay, I want to try this. I want to try that. So that curiosity kicks in. So when that kicks in, it's like they're lost in this world. We're like, okay, I don't know what I want to do, how should I go about it? So it, it starts from the family first mindset, not even family first, you first mindset. How do you nurture that environment? How do you water that garden that you're building? How do you do that? Mm. And, and th that's what I look at from the perspective. I'm like, it, it all comes down to you. We, we talk about it, I'm like, we talk from a more harsher point. We're like, if that does come a point, we're like, then we as society to a certain extent if we're getting way more cases back then it weren't that many like obviously there were back then as well but now it's like what's that pull i don't know the percentages i don't know whether it's like you know 20 percent. like has it increased or decreased i don't know that i haven't looked into it but there's a reason why that is right because i feel like to a lot of the points we, we fail in our family dynamic mm -hmm. as mom or father whatever we fail as parents there's a turn that we took wrong but sometimes is it's not in your control sometimes it's just not that's just how a certain individual is and you can't control that so you just gotta let when, it play when you out. say fail like what do you mean by that uh i feel like at a certain point where if a certain kid uh is um let's say feeling suppressed in s to certain thing or they don't understand something mm. because that environment was never created for them right so you're you're advocating for like openness openness yeah yeah because when you getting suppressed about a certain thing you can't yeah. i can't take certain thing to my dad because i don't know how he's gonna react yeah, so i'm like i don't yeah. even want to bring it up yeah. i'll figure it on my own so yeah. a lot of the times it's like you you, you just yeah so yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have this narrative i'm like there's somewhere you, you as a parent i feel like i'm not saying this is all on them it's not easy to decipher as a parent in this world especially when the social media has such a grasp on everything mm. so but to a certain extent i think you can control a lot of the things and how you go about it is um the outlook of your family and everything mm. interesting interesting
He's mm. yeah, he Moke is different. <laughs> Moke is different when it comes to this <laughs> stuff. He points to me, he's like, Yeah, Moke was the whole person. <laughs> yeah, me uh, and him are like he, almost two different persons to certain segments. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're agreeing with Jordy the t- time uh, last night, yeah. but what, what I'll say is like, you do whatever you want, right? It's a where we, we're really privileged to live in this world to have freedom of speech, do whatever you want. The one thing that I'm concerned about is. One is this whole thing of agenda being pushed. Again, I'm not I'm not an expert in this. Oh, stuff. to schools, yeah, and schools yeah, yeah. and stuff like I how it's being that. presented in schools. Because the thing is, these kids are young and they're being presented all this information. Then they themselves are getting confused over who they are. And my thing is like, I know well. My, I made an agreement with myself is that if this type of stuff is being pushed in schools, I'm taking my kid out. Because if my whole agenda is that if I'm a boy, do you have a cutoff? Let's say, how old would you say? Whatever age it is, the young. Yeah, but what was that age? 18, 19, 20, 15. Oh no, no. 13? So what's being presented like at a young age, like if they're like ten years old or whatever. If my thing is like, okay, I want to teach. Let's say I have a a boy, a son, right? And I'm teaching it like the the small steps, the responsibility that requires to become a man, right? To be physical fit, like, because my main thing is like. The st- the things that I wanted, uh, from a mentor was all the things I was talking about, the physical, the mental stuff and all that stuff, right? And my thing is like, if I'm gonna have stuff, I'm gonna make sure that my son learns it. It won't be to the extent of, uh, it won't be that harsh, but there'll be steps towards it, right? And my thing is that if in schools, if there are things that are gonna confuse him, right? Then he's just gonna be put in a mental state where he just doesn't know where to go. And so my thing is like, I'm gonna do what it's my control. If the government and the, you know, the, the system is really going to push this agenda, right? I'm going to take my kid out because I don't want my kid. I'm not saying like, you know, you're in a mentally ill or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm saying is that if that's what you pursue, go for it. All respect to you, right? But my thing is like there, this is where it's like the masculinity and the femininity. And there's this whole battle between the two of it, right? So which one am I? Uh, what it takes to become a man? What it takes to become a woman? If you are not a woman, then it's okay to be a man, right? So what... Like, my thing is, like, I'm, of course, I'm talking more conservative side, is that a boy is supposed to be a boy, a man, a woman is supposed to be, uh, a girl is supposed to be a girl, right? If later in life, if you are still have that, uh, same, have that same um, outlook. outlook, then by all means, you know, you're at that point where you can make your own decision, right? But till that point, I'm the father. I'm trying to guide you through this world and how harsh it is. And... That's it. <laughs> so if your kid was um, queer or trans, how would you respond? Let's say he's 14. Let's say he's 14. But, uh, well, my thing is, like, where, what came to that conclusion? Like, why, why do you think that way? What if your kid was like, I am 100% certain about this. I've known this my entire life. This well, he's only 14 years old. <laughs> yes, but what if they have a deep knowing around that? But how do, how do they know? How, how are they educated? Where are they getting this information from? How did they know if they weren't? Like, if your son was not trans or not queer, yeah. how did he get that information? Well, then that's what I'm saying. It's just then it's the school system, right? It's the impact from the outside world. Well, I then actually, that's where I guide him. That's where I'll guide him. Be like, hey, look, this is what it takes to become a man. So These you taught him how to be a man? I was teaching him how to become yes, a man. Yes, you was teaching him how to be a man, yeah. right? But if I'm getting, you know, some Push resistance... Back then I'll, I'll be like, okay, let's see where you're coming from. I'm not going to be like, no, you can't, no, no, not this. Yeah. But I'll, I'll start questioning, but like, hey, why do you think this way? Right. Who are you learning this from? But Who what if they're these? not learning it from someone? What if it's just inside of them? Well, how would it be inside of them? Well, so I think this is, so I think this is actually, but I think this is actually the thing is that we all assume that yeah. what it's it means within. to be normal hmm. is to be heteronormative and to be just who like to be Man rigid uh, to be a, yeah i think like that's the premise of queer theory is that we are not actually meant to be this or that yeah. we are actually quite fluid because we have both and we have all so then isn't that being confused it's not being confused i think it's so actually what's, just what's being the difference? <laughs> so it's not uh, there's no i think the difference is that in the current world that we live in and the society that we have lived in uh, it's really beneficial to have boxes. It's beneficial to be like, you are a man, you are a woman, do not come out of that box. Yeah. It's very rigid. There's binaries. Anytime there's a binary, it means that there's a system that's in control. control yeah. But if you actually go back to society before capitalism, hmm. before patriarchy, before the ownership of land got involved, 
there were no rigid categories. It was all actually very fluid. Most cultures had um, non-binaries. It was very normal to be not queer, not trans, but just be who you are, which could you could be a more feminine man, you could be a very masculine woman, or either or vice versa. You could actually just like be so fluid in that. Mm. That's what it meant. There were no prescribed roles. But when when capitalism got involved, when property ownership got involved, when pa patriarchy was created, that's when these systems actually needed a place to go, and that's when these boxes were created. So it's actually inherently in all of us. Like, we have feminine and masculine inside of us. We can teeter in or or, hmm. but there's a certain set of rules that we're taught that teach you who you should be. Hmm. And I think that that's the resistance that, like, no, this is normal. What I'm teaching you is normal. And I think why people are having an outcry to this sort of teaching and this learning is because there's a lot of fear around you're going to confuse my child. It's not confusing because if you think about it, the kids who have been queer and trans since they were born have been taught heteronormative education their entire lives. You always read books that was a man and a wife, a mm. man and a, ma a woman. You always watched movies. Mm. Everything was gendered. You were born, you got a blue balloon if you were a man. If you were born, you were a kid, girl, you got a pink balloon. Yeah. You were conditioned that. You were taught that that entire time. It was normalized, mm. you know? So, like, so it's like... Those people weren't impacted. Yeah. Like, if you're a queer person, you grew up in that world and you still were born queer. Like, you still ended up queer. Yeah, you were yeah. born with it, mm. right? So what's normal is what we see because there's an agenda to it. I'm not saying, like, you're, like, you know, just I think, like, everyone should be presented with the reality. The reality is that there are queer people in our world. Are, yeah. People are born that way. There's a reality of that. People are born gay. Yeah. It's normal. But we have made it not normal by being like, no, this is actually normal. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't think I have. That's why I I don't have this conversation with people in depth. I just tell them my two cents. Yeah, I'm like for me, it's like yeah. if somebody were to come out and say that, I'm like that's their life. I have nothing against them. I'm like it's your life. How you want to? Yeah, because I think we um, lead with the fact that it's a choice. choice it's not a yeah. choice. Yeah, it's like how you want to live it's your who life. You are. Yeah, it's who you are for me. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's what I kind of ties down to. You know, people gotta live to the fullest who they are, and we're not in any place to judge anybody. You know, as long as they're happy in the choices they make, uh, I think you should be acceptable. Of, even if you're a child or not, you should be acceptable of them regardless. And I don't think that we should frown upon, but I think that school-wise, yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's a deeper theory to be dived in, as you said, like what is normalized, what is not. I think in the grand scheme thing, it just comes down to what's like a man and a woman. Like that's how, you know, mm. we have progressed over centuries. Because let's stuff, say your like, kid comes to you and says, yeah. it's a boy, and says, I want to wear this dress. Mm. The kid has no. no idea that this is a dress made for girls. No mm. idea. The kid just wants to wear this pretty little fabric. You as a parent, you're like, no, you're a boy. You're not supposed to wear that. The kid's mm. going to think, oh, my God, I'm doing something wrong. There's something wrong with me. Why did I want to wear this dress? The kid just wanted to wear a dress. N that, yeah. I, I mean, even with my, my sister, like, I, like, as little kids, we've done that. I have one yeah. dress that doesn't make me any type of, like... But if you, as you said, if you panic as a parent, be like, yeah. oh, what are you doing? I think that it, it that's triggers the, that the kid. Panic. Yeah, that's the panic. Mm. But because I, my mother, I have, but like, as weird as it sounds, but your kid, you're like, I a put six, makeup seven, on my brother once. Yeah, so you're like fun. six, seven years old. You don't know any yeah. better, right? So it's not like it doesn't change the orientation of what you like or what you who you are. It's just uh, that's just uh, that's normal. That's no more normal than it is. Be like freaking out. Be like, no, take this shit off. Go wear mm. your yeah. normal clothes. That's that's more weird. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's genuine because yeah. I have lived through it, and I'm, I, I can say it like who I am is just that didn't impact me. My parents yeah. didn't be like, "What the fuck? Like, take that shit out!" Like, no, I never did that. So, yeah. and I grew up in India too. So, yeah. in a Punjab yeah. <laughs> and a pen. Of <laughs> came all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the time. It's a normalized, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're so, revered, right? Like, if you don't give them like what they want, they you're scared. scared of them. You're scared that they won't put a curse on you, and yeah. that people be genuinely scared. Be like, they're no, powerful. Like, but they are. They got some. Mm. The, the things that you can't contain but you know, all, this all, all I'm saying is just you know the circle that you have the type of role models you have in your life is going to be a direct reflection of how what you're going to become in the future Yeah. whatever route it may be right um, whatever gender you want to you know what, however, however way you want to label yourself it is a direct reflection of the information that you take in but that's different though. Those are two different things. What do you mean? You imagine like if I were in a circle, right? Like she could be gay, right? That doesn't impact us though. It won't impact me. It yeah. won't even have the impact on me. Be like, oh, 
I gotta start thinking like that. No, I think the environment you're talking about and the environment we're talking about when it comes to sexuality, those are two different things. Mm. Environment of what you're consuming and environment what you're doing. Mm. I'm going clubbing, I'm partying. That's different compared to how you feel like your sexual orientation are two different things. If you're hanging out with someone who's lesbian or or they're gay, they like they're like men. Mm. It's not gonna change the way how I view life. It's not gonna make me think like hmm, I think I should do that as well. It's not. Mm. Those are two different things, I think. Yeah. And I would rather be a safe parent than the right parent. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. a, it's, I think this topic needs to be discussed more uh, in we our might community. Just have to have a when, no, no. I think <laughs> this needs to be discussed in a way, manner where like people have some sort of um, education yeah. behind it and actually yeah. have a platform where people that are in that community and even or, or have like a round table talk within that community, in, especially in the South community. We don't have that. We don't have that open discussion when it comes to that. I think mm-hmm. that'd be a good idea for someone to get out there and actually have an open discussion table uh, talk about that. Bring yeah. in people that are actually professional that have studied, you know, when it comes to this type of stuff, it'd be cool. I think mm-hmm. that's what's needed. But yeah, for that one, I'll just leave it at that. But you we'll know, do another one. We're gonna do another one. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna, yeah. But I think one thing I do want to touch with you, and the last thing I want to do touch upon you with is the community work you did, uh, you do, mm-hmm. and how you got into Five X Fest. I know it's like a whole different yeah. segment, but that's the one thing I did want to touch upon uh, with. How did you get in that, and uh, what speaks to you about it that you're so like? You're honed in on it. I see it all the time, like on 5X Fest. Like, you're so, like, adamant about what you're doing. You're so excited. That's great to see these days. Like, what, what exci- like, excites you, you know, when yeah. it comes to that? Okay, so when I did my master's, I went to go study why so many young people in my community were going into gangs. And um, my paper was called Surrey Jacks. <laughs> it was great. And um, I, fi- I figured, like, while I was doing it, I realized that it was a little bit too niche and that actually what the real issue is that for people who moved, so my context is Punjab. So for the people who moved from Punjab to Surrey, sure. Vancouver, wherever, um, they had their own set of immigrant challenges, like not knowing the language, their job qualifications, this and that. They had their own unique set of challenges. But then when their kids were born here, their kids had their own challenges. challenges. So like, and theirs didn't, theirs weren't like, they weren't like only in a certain time period it was like their entire lives so it's like when they're five when they're 10 when they're 30 when they're 40 their challenges are so nuanced and so unique and so different than their parents Mm. so for me i'm really interested in exploring what those like challenges are but what those opportunities are um what it means to be that person Person, who's born somewhere different than their parents or immigrates to a place that is different so i call that the very like third space hybrid bicultural identity where I don't know about you, but like when I was growing up, sometimes I was like, am I too white? Am I too brown? Mm. Am I like, am I brown? Am I white? Am I Canadian? Am I Punjabi? Am I Indian? Am I South Asian? Am I Mm. Indo-Canadian? What am I? (laughs) And so there was a lot of confusion that happened. Sometimes I figured it out. Sometimes I didn't. And so that like unique space drives a lot of the work that I do. And um, 5X kind of like literally fell into my lap. Like somebody asked me to be a general manager for one month and that one month turned into three years. And then now I'm an executive director and, and it'll be one year in November. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of the work that we do in the organization is, so when you're Canadian, you're in one world. When you're Punjabi, Nobody you're in a second world. world. Yeah. When you don't fit into any of those worlds, you have to build your own world. You have to build the third space. Mm. So when you're constantly translating who you are, like, oh, my name is Harpreet. Okay, and what does that mean? Okay, like, why did, why did I take roti for lunch to school? <laughs> like, all the wild white kids are looking at me. Like, when you're constantly having to explain who you are, you can't actually do any meaningful work. Like, no change actually happens. Happen, yeah. But when you're in this, like, brand new third space where you get to be all of you, you can, like, show up wearing, like, your your corta pajama Come with on, your Air yeah. Forces. You can listen <laughs> to, uh, what is it, like, uh, got an Ajala's oh, no, songs, is, like, the yeah, way that, yeah. like, he's got the trappy in it, right? Like, that is where real cultural production happens. That's where real meaning happens. That's where the culture actually moves beyond. And so that's why I love what I do, because I am building that world while yeah. also living in it, while also experiencing it for the first time. And so that's why I love 5X so much, is because it just gives me access to that work all the time. And we are a festival. We have, like, a festival every June, and mm-hmm. it's usually, like, multi-day music and art and we yeah. just program a bunch of young kids who are emerging artists who are trying to just make it big and a lot of people that we programmed were never being programmed anywhere and yeah. now they make global impact like nobody was programming Jenny and Interpol ever but we programmed them like two or three years in a row yeah. it's not it's not our our because of us that they've blown they up now up, yeah. but we saw that they were gonna blow up and so we programmed them um so <laughs> that's 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 kind of what I do and that's why I do it and even my podcast is like that like I'm gonna talk about 
you know, what it means to be a 27 year old brown girl yeah, living yeah. with pa- parents who are born in Punjab and how they don't understand my job, for example. You mm-hmm. know, because that's relatable. So many of us experience that. Yeah. I think that uh, what you think, what you said last is like being a 27 year old brown girl that the job that you're doing, that doesn't seem like you're doing anything. Yeah. It doesn't have any meaningful imp- or have anything meaningful yeah. impact because they'd be like, oh, so. What do you do? Like, like, can, can yeah. they want to be like, <laughs> my daddy always, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to explain, but it's, it's like sector work it's like advocacy it's changing culture that's why i call myself a cultural producer because i'm part of like creating space on how to create cult like new, new culture, culture yeah. right like new ways of thinking new mm. ways of being um and I, I guess it really just comes back to where i started the episode with which was like i was a very curious kid growing up and i i like to ask questions, questions yeah. and i like to poke holes in places where like <laughs> things don't feel good, good and i'm yeah. like why do we why is this why is that you know um and that's the beautiful thing, because yeah. like it brings the community together. You like so many content creators might come out to that, be like, oh, like I have a space, space to be around people that I connect with. Yeah, and be exactly who I am. I don't need yeah, to pretend. I don't, I don't need to, to show up as anybody else. Literally, you come as yourself. Exactly, and, yeah. and having that space is huge. So you know, shout out to you guys. Even and you guys are growing every year. You guys are mm-hmm. AR crazy this year too. Yeah. You know all these people that are that are blowing up, and you guys are giving them platform to showcase their skills. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people can be. And not even showcase, like imagine if someone didn't have that ability to put themselves out there. They can reach out to you guys like, hey, I struggle with this. You guys can help them out. Just having that platform in itself Mm -hmm. is such a huge, you know, accomplishment. And, you know, kudos to you guys for keeping it up and and growing it every year. You know, not being stagnant and just like, you know, it's it's a cool thing we're doing. We've been recognized. A lot of the people, like, they tend to have that uh, misconception that I'm doing it because I'm getting recognized, but I don't really care for the project itself. A yeah. lot of the times, that's when it, it kind of falls through the cracks because it doesn't grow, but you're still doing it. But what's the purpose? What's the purpose behind it? So it mm-hmm. always comes back to purpose. Like, what's totally. the purpose about what you're doing? Everything in life has to be with a purpose, whether mm-hmm. it's your job, with, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your, you know, uh, hobbies, whatever it is, do it with a purpose, and it will it would equate to a bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Totally. And, you know, and that's the one thing that we <laughs> preach over and over in this podcast. You know, that's the why, that's why we want to create this, too. Yeah. We don't have these enough talks in a podcast where we normalize a lot of the other stuff. We're like goofy stuff, laugh. Everybody wants to be the 8K, the next 8K. Like, how do we become the next <laughs> funny fo- podcast? How do we become viral? How do we do this? I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. But how but do you become the next you? Yeah. yeah. You know? How do you become the you, authentic you, the stuff that you like talking about, but yeah. you don't think people are not going to watch it because, oh, it's not going to catch people's eye, but that's not true. Yeah. We know, yeah. like, if they we don't last that long, though, you know, yeah, yeah but they, they, else. they don't. They when have their little fun, their jokes, which is good. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad in any sense, but how long does it last? Mm-hmm. How much more joking around are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, there's, when you there's a reason why all these podcasts like they just fail after. Not even podcasts, episode. like the, what people do in general, it doesn't well, last yeah. that long when seeking you're seeking attention. You, right? So, you know, having these conversations is important, man. Like, I, you know, one day, hopefully, you know. You know, maybe there's a there's a making in the uh, <laughs> the brown girl guilt we could come on one day. You know, I yeah. actually I have <laughs> a dream, and it's called brown boy guilt. <laughs> I need a host for the brown boy guilt podcast. Yeah, yeah. you never know. You know, yeah, so I want to produce it. <laughs> it'd, it'd, be, it'd be it'd be fun. It'd, it'd be cool to you know yeah. to do integrate yeah. all that, and it's cool. And our yeah. community even needs that. Totally. Yeah. And our, even my parent, my mom understands it. She she's like my biggest advocate of supporting this. She'll put it on her WhatsApp stories. Aww. She's like my best. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to call that on YouTube. <laughs> like, I love it. Now. It's like, she's our biggest fan. And now that I had, like, where my dad, he, like, he doesn't understand it. His mind goes, like, he's like, He's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like, you know, his mindset goes to a different yeah. perspective. Yeah. But again, it, it, it gives me an opportunity to teach him. Totally. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's uh, I think it helps other people too, mm. to do what they want and uh, do it at the best. Don't just half ass it. Go all the way in. Reach out to people. If they don't respond tomorrow, they'll respond the day after. Mm-hmm. Call them the day after. If they don't call the day after, do it at the week after, a month after. Keep keep, keep at it. If you weren't, if you didn't respond, I would be like, yo, keep. Ma- I tell him sometimes. I'm like, keep messaging people. Mm-hmm. They'll yeah, reply yeah. one day. Keep messaging yeah, people. No, exactly. They will respond. Then the day you give up is the day you give up on what you, you know, want from your own destiny. Mm-hmm. You know, it uh, it equates to that. So never give up, man. That's the one thing I tell you. Never give up on what you're doing, no matter how far fetched you think it is, or no one supports you. 
people are not going to support you. It's a lonely world. You got to find your own way and fight your own battles. But as you said, one thing, when you do find those people that really connect with you, hold them tight, hold them dearly, treat them right, mm-hmm. and uh, you'll go far. So, any, you know, any last words you want to give out to the audience uh, that are watching this? What's the one thing that you would say is uh, that defines you who you are? I, don't know, I wouldn't say define, because you still say you, you're kind of going through the process, still figuring yourself out. But what's the one advice you would give out to the people out there that, you know, that struggle to find themselves, let's mm. say? Because you are more, I want to say, in that area where you tend to push yourself to find who you are. You meditate, you do this, you do that, yeah. and incorporate that a lot of people don't. Uh, people don't uh, understand how important that is how would you say if someone's struggling with that you know what, what are some tips and stuff you can give to people that can you know start that journey you know themselves uh like this answer has changed a lot for me but i think this is the best one that i found it's to spend five minutes in the morning mm. just focusing on your breath <laughs> and five minutes before you go to sleep that's mm, it okay. that will change your life Five minutes in the and morning. It's, and it's 10 minutes out of your day. 10 minutes out of your day, out of your 24-hour day. Yeah. yeah. Don't, I don't want to hear no the over, I'm right. It I takes too long. It's too shut hard. Your... <laughs> no, five minutes. Put your phone away <laughs> for five minutes before you get out of bed. Just focus on your breath. And then before you go to sleep for five minutes, do the same. I don't know why I took and a deep breath. breath. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just took a deep breath. I don't know why. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's like literally come back into your body because... 100 percent of the problems in our lives are created in our minds yeah. and the more you can notice that the more you can witness that the more power you have over that the more you can change that that is the number one most life-changing thing that i've ever done i, I meditate 15 minutes in the morning and i mm. it varies sometimes it's guided sometimes it's breath sometimes i listen to japji yeah. it changes it mm. always changes but it's so consistent i've done it every single day since april and wow. now we're in september and I would say this is the greatest growth that I've experienced in my life. And I've been in therapy for like six years and I love my therapist. <laughs> but still, I would say that's the number one thing. If there's only one thing you can do for yourself, it's so simple. You don't need to it pay is. for it. You don't nope. need to do anything. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes before bed. Mm. That's it. That's perfect. It will change Very simple. your life. <laughs> Effective. <laughs> it yeah. is, man. I mean, people, most people still find excuses. No, I was too busy that day. Oh, I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep. Yeah, yeah. It was a hard day at work. Yeah, yeah. You shit your ass up. It was yeah. not. It's, stop Ten complaining. It's not you can do killing. that. You can do that I think for yourself. Can. Yeah, man, I see my dad walking outside in the grass, staying grounded and stuff like that. I love Just that. Just walking man. around in little loops, checking out his garden on the side too in the meantime. Yeah. It's, it's nice to see though you yeah. he helps him he tells me all the time yeah, it just it changes everything for mm. him simplest thing yeah so. it's what you, Mark? yeah so well, what's a good drop so what are some you want to give advice to other people out there that might be struggling some things because a lot of people me? you know yeah man you mean you yeah you me? who else <laughs> you know, everybody got something good to give out to the world man put it out there so mm. they want a message to the world out there man hey man i say the quote all the time <laughs> ignorance is bliss man that's all it is. I think we put too much in our heads and we overthink mm. it. Just focus on you and the right things will come your way. So, that's yeah. it. Well, on that note, Harpo, thank you for coming in. Thank Thanks you for, for taking me. your time. Yeah. It was an intriguing it. talk. I know we talked a lot about relationship, but I think yeah. it's needed, especially in we this environment. Yeah. Where everybody feels like they're lost. I can't find a guy. I can't find yeah. a woman. This, that. Find so. yourself. Yeah, find yeah. yourself first. Yeah. Everything will come to you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. No, Thanks thank for you having so much. me. I appreciate yeah. it. No, it was a beautiful talk. I think uh, these are healthy debates. We can have more and more. Even if you have a d- disagreement, I think a lot of topics, we did have a disagreement, yeah. but yeah. it's a healthy discussion to mm. talk about. So. Thank you so much, and then uh, hopefully your audience enjoyed it. But uh, leave us, you know, leave us your comments and thoughts, what you guys thought, because I'm intrigued. You know, that even if yeah. people were like, you know, I don't want them to shy away from be like, oh, this, that. But I, I want people to be yeah. honest about what we do. If you do think we have a skewed perception about something or a perspective, tell us. Mm. Yeah, uh, we love to know and learn. And, uh, just don't be mean. Yeah, don't be yeah. mean, man. Don't be a dickhead in the comments. Be yeah, like, give oh, us a, yeah. give us more some more things to talk <laughs> yeah. about. If you wouldn't say it to my face in real life, don't type it <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight off. Yeah, straight. See, yeah. rip off, sorry, baby. Yeah, <laughs> I'll pull up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thank you guys. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Right, see you. <laughs>